How's it going everybody? Back with another Out of the Park 22 video. I've been asked several times since the game came out what game settings I use and just to kind of go through when I start a new sim, how I adjust the settings and what I do. I know some of the stuff I've covered kind of piecemeal in other videos, but I figured I'd do one video centrally located place here to show the game settings that I use. And before I do that, just the periodic reminder, sometimes given the description of this video, there's other places you can find this channel, like on Twitter, other ways you can get more content, perks like Patreon, and then also where you can find the podcast, which should be a new episode soon, I'm hoping. So here we are, new game, Cincinnati Reds General Manager. We're gonna go to the game settings page, and this is the first screen that comes up. And I have a video on why I use the 20 to 80 scouting scale and so first thing to do here is change the overall rating i like the overall rating to be in increments of five some people you know 20 to 80 also totally reasonable i mean play it however you want but i would prefer increments of five over just the plain 20 to 80 and so that's all i really do on this left hand side here i haven't changed anything from the defaults on the coaching systems you know it's only been what two weeks the game's been out about so I, you know there's nothing that i found where i need to change something there just yet um on this side you can adjust some things that'll kind of affect like this i guess like the load times and all that and how big your file is what i normally do is here i save box scores from human leagues i generate game recaps normally just for human teams and same with um the wa this is the wins probability graph WPA. So I normally do that just for human teams as well. And this delay, uh, the win probability graph generation, it'll be generated when needed, which basically I think makes the, uh, you know, the thing, the file smaller. I think that's friendlier on your file size. I could be wrong. Uh, <laughs> and so same, save game logs. I normally either have this on human teams or none. I've done it both ways. And I don't save I don't generate highlights. I never watch them. And that's, you know, I do leave the top prospect list annually for an update rather than dynamic. And I leave storylines on. That's all I adjust on this page. So then go to players and face gen. I sometimes play with this on, but honestly, I play, I play with it off. I play with it off now. It just makes the, the load, uh, fi loading files and this saves um, room and the size of the file. Injury frequency, I leave this on normal, the out-of-the-park classic. Some people I know bump this up to high. I find there are plenty of injuries in the normal mode, though. And I do occasionally delay injury diagnosis. I just feel like that's more realistic if sometimes you don't know what's going on for a guy with a guy for a few days. I show the personality players on the profile page. So this will tell, this will show what type of personality ratings player has. It'll show up in the right-hand side of the player page. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's see so it, it'll basically say he's high in adaptability and work ethic that would not be there if you hadn't checked that box for moustakas so that's what that one does i like to have it right there because there are some personality things that are important and oh check that out um and let's see i don't change anything on the aging speed i think there's decent arguments to be made to change it i just haven't haven't taken the time well it's not taking the time i just haven't dove into it to really do something that i'm comfortable with and changing it because i don't want to screw it up <laughs> this is basically why i why i leave that where it is i do like to have keep all career left right splits which is something i've never done before but la i think i'm going to remember to do it this year <laughs> last year towards the end of my O's sim it's, it's just helpful if you guys have guys coming up through your system and you want to look through their minor league history of does this guy have bad platoon splits, this helps you rather than just having his current year minor league splits or his major league career splits. Feeling stats, I think that's fine to leave major leagues only. Career postseason stats, I don't care about their minor league postseason stats. I leave that alone. AI settings, oh yes. So I think when I start my sim, I think I'm gonna put it like two below the hardest right there. And same with the favors prospects. That's a work in progress as we get to know this um, game better and as we learn the different aspects of the new trade AI but I found in messing around that's probably where I'm going to start with it on my sim I do change the ratings weights and I basically try this is basically what is the AI gonna wait when they 
evaluate players between ratings, current year, previous year, and two years ago stats. I like to have it be fairly even between ratings and stats. So what I normally do is do like 45 here. So it's a little less than half for ratings. And then I like to go like 30 and 20. No real exact science to it for me. It's just what, what I've gone with the last, I don't know, I think two versions. And it's worked well for me. But people definitely do this very different ways. If you've got a way you like, uh, leave it in the comments. I know some people turn rating weights totally off. And some people leave it as is, but I'd be, I'm always interested to hear how people play with that and why. But I found that putting the ratings weight up at 65, like it just weighs the scout too much and not how the player's actually doing in things like trades and stuff when the AI is evaluating. So that's, a, that's about all I do on this. I don't change this to Sabermetric. And to be honest, I've never really looked into that much of what it does because you can do that with your man. Like you can hire a manager who does lineups different ways. So I leave that traditional. Almanac, I don't touch that. Online league, I don't touch that. Database, I don't touch that. So then we're over to the league settings. This is just where if you want to edit ballparks, if you want to expand the league, if you want to restructure the league, do a free agent draft. I don't mess with any of this unless I'm doing some sort of special league. But when I start just a normal major league sim, I don't mess with it. Leagues and teams, same thing. This is just if you want to realign, if you want to restructure. Uh, generally, don't mess with that. Rules, I will, you know, I'll, I'll happily take the DH in the NL. And I leave the three batter minimum on. I, turn, I do keep modified extra innings off. I don't put the runner on second. I leave all the roster size stuff alone. And... Let's see. I don't think there's anything else that I mess with here. No, I leave all I leave all this default. Leave it alone. And I do allow the trading of injured players who are injured greater than seven days. I find that to be super annoying when you can't trade a guy who's injured for, I don't know, two months. But, of course, I think sometimes the AI probably doesn't properly evaluate the injury in the trade. So it's probably can be exploited. So if you, you know, I guess for realism, either uncheck it or just weight that when you're, you know, weigh that, factor that when you're making trades, don't exploit it with the AI or do, play the game however you want. And let's see, I don't mess with anything else here with the drafting, don't do anything there. Financials, don't, I don't mess with anything. I honestly would love to know what people find with inflation. It's just another one of those things where it's like, well, I could probably tweak my sim to make it more realistic, but I don't want to do something that's going to totally screw things up, so I leave it default. But would love to know what people play with there and why and how it plays for them. Service time, all this good stuff. I've thought about restructuring that for this year to make it more player-friendly. I honestly think with the new CBA, you'll after next season in real MLB, you'll see some changes here. I've thought about making this like five years to get to uh, free agency or two years to get to arbitration or five years to become a minor league free agent, just to make it more friendly for the players. And I think it makes the game more challenging because players get to free agency sooner. I find like if I draft a college player, especially a pitcher, by the time he gets up to the majors and by the time he's eligible for free agency, he's like 30, 31, I'm not gonna sign him. I feel like those decisions would be harder if he was two years younger. So I've thought about changing stuff here for my sim and but honestly i might just wait till next year when i think these things might be different uh, in real life and would be different out of the park 23 but you can always change these things here to make uh, make players reach free agency faster or or slower later and i don't mess with anything with the salary baselines let's see options this is just do you want the league to evolve naturally like and, and if the answer is yes but say you don't want teams relocated just uncheck that box you can undo these things if they happen like i've had them reduce the 40 man roster size to like 38 randomly i just undid it but i leave these things on to see what happens and undo it if i don't like it you can rename awards to the actual awards like you can change the gold the great glove award to gold glove award so let's go ahead and do that if i can type that would help and you know you can change platinum stick to silver slugger those i i think <laughs> I got heckled in the comments last year because I hadn't changed it. So I'll uh, I'll change it again this year. And Hall of Fame, I leave this all alone. I think if you know if you want if you think that if you're a small hall person, bump this up the induction threshold percent so fewer people make it into the Hall of Fame. I just leave it at default. 
Uh, I leave all these things on the default too in terms of when spring training starts, when the All-Star game takes place, tiebreakers, all that. Leave it alone. I leave it alone. Um, you know, do what you want. Follow your heart. Play the game how you want. I don't change anything with this players tab. I don't change anything with this historical tab. Stats and AI is a very interesting page. This league totals here, I have a separate video called uh, Game Settings to Know, I think it is. I'll try to remember to link to it in the comments where I talk about why I change my auto calc uh, modifiers to 2016. And what that does is it gives you a 2016 run environment. So it's still a bit like modern baseball with a lot of home runs, a lot of strikeouts, et cetera, but not quite the like the three true outcome kind of game we have the last several years. I found if you leave this default and just you know just let it go, the amount of home runs over the course of a career are just bananas. The amount of offense is just bananas. So I tweak it back to 2016 and I find that the home run leader is somewhere normally between 50 to 60 home runs. A few guys per year cross 50. 40 is an accomplishment. So is 30 still an accomplishment? It's not like every player who gets 400 at bats hits 30 home runs, like it seems like in real life now. So I tweak this back to 2016, and I do have another video where I go into more detail on that. And yeah, I leave all this alone too. But certainly, I think there's arguments to be made to, you know, change the hooks, the plus two for that hook for starting pitcher. I think that's different this year. I might tweak that because the hooks for starting pitchers are really fast in real life. So. Yeah, that's, that's the end of it. That's kind of how I set up the settings in my sim. And like I said, some of it I just leave alone because I've never messed around with it. And I don't really, haven't taken the time to kind of learn what different tweaks would do. So certainly if some of the stuff I skimmed over here, you do differently and it works well for you, let me know. Let the people watching know. Always interested to hear how people are playing. But that's all for this video. See you guys later.